Scott, the first, I guess the first thing I'd really like to, to ask you in, a, in the most general sense is, what do you see as being the value proposition of cryptocurrency? When you, you know, when you first discovered Bitcoin, uh, studying it ever since, what do you really see as being the invention? Like, what, what are you able to do today, uh, post Satoshi white paper that you weren't able to do pre Satoshi white paper? If it, if it was a patent, if it was an invention, what really do you see as being kind of the intellectual property of, of, uh, of Bitcoin cryptocurrency? Well, keeping in mind that um, without a fee, any kind of currency, you cannot pay the rent, um, buy a car, send your kids to school, can't do anything. Um, and the individual or individuals that control that currency control you at any time. I mean, you can work and slave and save your money for years and you have produced and you have saved. And in the stroke of a pen, that could be cut in half by an inflationary policy or, or what have you. Um, in order to use that currency, you must do it in a way, at least if you do it significantly, where it can be monitored. Right? You want to send a wire transfer, we're going to know that. You want to do something more than $10,000, you better not do it in cash in America. Uh, on and on and on. Um, cryptocurrency. The blockchain and cryptocurrency together, because uh, as we're moving on, the blockchain uh, is used for things other than cryptocurrency, which are connected to cryptocurrency. Okay, if that makes any sense. Um, the value is, is that we get to create or use what someone else has created, um, a currency that is controlled by someone. That um, um, is our, I mean, cryptocurrency in the blockchain, it's the first technology that uh, has arisen in the past 100 years that did not come from the bowels of a secret government program or a major corporation. It came from the people, ordinary people, really. Um, well, maybe not all ordinary, but normal people. Uh, a bunch of geeky developers, all right? Egghead, some of them. Uh, built something, made it open source, and from that small beginning, we have built through progressively more complex and powerful blockchains um, something that people without government have never built before. You realize this is not a government program, people. This is a people program. Um, and no one is getting on board in the proper fucking way. I mean, I just described how it can free us, and everybody's jumping on board, but not to free themselves, uh, to make a quick buck. Jump into the exchanges. What's going to go up? What's going to go down? And I'll tell you now that financial freedom is not possible. A lot of money, that's possible. Uh, freedom from uh, having to worry about eating, at least for today, because I promise you, no matter how much you have, it can't be wiped out overnight by the vagaries of reality. So, no, that doesn't make you free. What makes you free is having control over your life without massive surveillance, massive um, influence from the outside, massive cave that you have to live inside in order to make peace with that system. So this is what that offers in a nutshell. I'm sorry I went on so long. No, no, no. That's 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 you got you got to the crux of it. So basically, you see it as being um, uh, the the kind of the the reinvention of money. So non-state controlled money, uh, money controlled by the people, built for the people by the people, so to speak, uh, controlled by a program uh, that that no government can can theoretically manipulate. Um, so do you when when do you think Satoshi intentionally invented it as a, a pseudo anonymous crypto? Did he was that his intent or was that all he was capable of doing at the time? Do you think if he could have done all, do it over again, he would have made it more anonymous? No, please God. First of all, Satoshi did not invent Bitcoin. Satoshi was one of a dozen people over a period of seven years 
that collectively evolved Bitcoin from their collective efforts. Satoshi was merely the motherfucker that wrote the white paper. They probably drew straws. Um, and it doesn't matter who Satoshi is. This was a group effort of some very bright, geeky people uh, who chose to give that in open source to the world. Thank you, guys. From that crude beginning, we have some seriously sophisticated shit happening in the blockchain world. Um, and we have a power in our hands. And this shit didn't come from governments, people. This didn't come from corporations. None of it. Monero, the privacy of that did not come from government, obviously. <laughs> governments do not want privacy, at least not for anybody outside themselves. Of course, they want privacy as a government, but the people should have none. So we're developing magical things. But yeah. why, why didn't they build uh, an anonymity, uh, true anonymity, true fungibility into the protocol uh, layer when they launched Bitcoin? Do you think it was just the tech wasn't there at the not, time? Or? Well, no, that just was our goal. Your you need to understand what their goal was. If you read the white paper, it's pretty damn clear. A means of um, creating currency electronically. There was no thought to what next. There was no thought to, well, let's see if we're going to need Jesus. Look at what they created, people. Let's not kick them in the ass because they did not include privacy, you know, or AI or a self masturbatory machine. Fuck me. They did something spectacular. Let it be. All right. So when did you get into crypto and, and when did it really like hit you like a ton of bricks? When did you when did you uh, realize that this was something big, that this was, you know, the whatever, the, the one of the greatest inventions of of, of uh, you know, humanity? Um, when did it when did you have that awakening, so to speak? In 2010, when one of the most creative people who has worked for me multiple times I came down to Belize, we went out on my sailboat and uh, Instead of having fun, he spent the entire fucking time uh, educating me on the blockchain. And he was mining at that time. And by the way, you didn't have to buy Jihan Wu's miners back then. <laughs> no, you what, you got a PC with a graphic card? Actually, it's a story. You did not need a graphic card, okay? You got something, can add two and two, branch to here and there, um, check low, check whatever, something called a computer. Great, you can fucking mine. So... Um, that's when I came in, in the contact with him, saw him immediately. I mean, he would not come down to Belize to spend all that time for something trivial. Not this man, James Zoronsky. And thank you, James, for those of you who may know him out there. He was in California, one of the brightest technologies I've ever had the pleasure to cross paths with. And has worked with me. Um, he'll say he worked for me, but no, he worked with me many times. And ha has your opinion, so I guess, when did you realize the importance of, of or the necessity for this stuff to be anonymous and private at the protocol layer? Did you, was that something that hit you right away? Because I know a lot of people kind of got into Bitcoin, uh, bought Bitcoin, started using P Bitcoin kind of under the assumption that it already was anonymous, despite it, <laughs> say, it, it wipes it for itself. And private, so, yeah. Yeah, so is that something you realize right away? I mean, you obviously being kind of a security expert. Of course. But what I recognized was something truly insignificant in what was coming, in relation to what was coming from that. It was Bitcoin. I mean, great. It fucking works. Look at that. You can actually try Who gives a shit about all the ancillary crap at this moment? Um, and I knew that that, that blockchain is as beautifully constructed as it was. I'm a mathematician. You know, I, I get an erection when I talk uh, third order partial differential equations. So please forgive me. Anyway, I, I go off on that. But no, I saw the beauty immediately. Man, is that not mathematically sweet, even mathematically perfect for the goal. Uh, and I knew, I knew what would come. I went straight from there in my mind back in 2010 to, whoa, Let's look a little bit at the implication 10 years down the line. There's going to be either a civil war or a totalitarian crackdown or some sort of 
hypnosis that convinces the populace that yes, cryptocurrency is good and we have adopted it. We've got the the uh, crypto dollar, like like China's making the crypto yen. Well, every government will have the crypto thing. I saw this in 2010 in a flash. Yeah, so obviously governments will steal this from us. They can't steal something that's free and open, but they can steal the concept, twist it, because I promise you, the, the only one that's been announced yet, the Chinese, Chinese um, crypto, crypto yuan, I promise you, if you use that, every second of your life is going to be monitored and analyzed and shifted around in every penny that you spend. They know who you got it from, where they got it from, on back to the beginning of time. And I saw that as the end, the utmost total end of human freedom. Now, how about with Bitcoin it's, itself? Because, I mean, I, you know, we talk about this a lot on the show. Uh, obviously, you know, a state-run cryptocurrency, you know, especially run by a country like China, uh, would, would most certainly be a surveillance coin. Um, but Bitcoin itself, isn't Bitcoin itself a surveillance coin? And what, what scares me about that is uh, people are opting into it, kind of thinking it's the opposite, thinking it's the solution. It's the kind of the way to, to opt out of the, you know, the current, uh, you know, state controlled world that we live in. Uh, it's a way to opt into this decentralized realm where nothing is controlled. But it, but but the reality is you're opting into uh, a perfectly transparent blockchain where every transaction you make is recorded and not only recorded, but saved for eternity. Um, so do you do you fear there may be some uh, issues there where it, as Bitcoin Bitcoin gets momentum that it may actually take us in the wrong direction or will. Or is it okay in something like the little brother Monero will, will be there on the side for, for the necessary, uh, you know, escape into what we really need this stuff to become? What's, what's your opinion there? Uh, don't get too big headed about Monero. Remember who you're talking to, okay? <laughs> because if anybody knows anything about security, it's me. And we'll discuss this later. So anyway, um, uh, is it a problem? Um, no, I mean, it's no more of a problem than people who choose to take off their clothes and bathe in the sun naked on the beach. I mean, God, people can see your genitals. Yeah, so that's fine. For people or for transactions, I don't know, maybe you might purposely just to piss the government off, uh, be using Monero or or anything, SafeX, who cares? You know, some of them are very clunky, but anything's better than nothing. Um, and that's what your things are. But in order to fuck with the government, at least twice a week, you will go onto your Bitcoin wallet and buy a pallet of soap or um, whatever. Not a pallet, that's a lot of money. That, that bar of soap, uh, you know, an off brand of toothpaste, you know, uh, something just to fuck with people or you don't have to use it at all do you not understand that this is what cryptocurrency is people go we have too many we have almost seven thousand now we have too many what? what what is too many every fucking child in school should have the ability to make the billy coin like a kid two years ago did in kansas for fuck's sake the entire school was using the billy coin for trading chewing gum and maybe even weed. I don't fucking know. But what's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Nothing. It's kids understanding their power by being able to create their own fucking currency. Do you understand what a paradigm shift in the relationship between people and government that means? So I, I guess what so what you're saying is that, you know despite Bitcoin's flaws so to speak if you want to call them that or not I don't know if you do um, it's it's ultimately obviously a good thing because it's it's bringing people into this arena it's bringing them into crypto and then from there they hopefully will will make their 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 way into more uh, private and anonymous cryptos right I mean I, I'm assuming that's your hope right we don't want everybody. 
great. Not really. I mean, what I'm saying is it doesn't matter. Then number one, Bitcoin works, people. It fucking works. I don't use it. Well, sometimes I do because that's all people say. Hey, you know, would you do this for me and, uh, for a couple hundred bucks? Yes. And I don't even see. Here's the beauty of all this cryptocurrency. You never even see the people. I mean, talk to them on the phone, meet them on Twitter. I need some artwork done. Now, here's a prime example. You know, with Philippe. Uh, with, I don't know if you guys follow art on the internet, but uh, uh, a lot of money, that's his Twitter handle, um, is one of the best digital artist in the fucking world. And I came across his words and holy shit. Um, and I, I got to meet this guy. So I finally got in touch with him and he's done over a hundred images for me. For those who follow uh, the fun things I do in life on Twitter, like um, I made um, caricatures of all the top 50 personalities in, in crypto. They weren't caricatures at all. They were fine art, every one of them. He did every one of those pieces. Um, so I've never met him face to face. I only recently talked to him and heard his voice for the first time two weeks ago. This is the magic of the internet, and we work perfectly well together if you were just texting. Now, um, if I had to wire money, send checks, um, our relationship would be a fucking nightmare. I'd always have to go into the bank. You know, I might get, I might get an idea in the morning. Uh, you know, text him at 10 a.m. and at 1, 8, 1 p.m. I've got my product and I pay on, on delivery. Well, I'm sorry, I've got to go down to the bank today, but I can't, my leg's broken. Please, there's such a terrific advantage to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. What's wrong with it? It fucking works too. It ain't private, but in dealings where everybody knows that Philippe works with me, so who gives a flying fuck? It's not like I'm paying him thousands of dollars for, for painting or something. No. So nothing wrong with Bitcoin, please. There's nothing wrong with any cryptocurrency, provided it's not a total scam. I'm not sure what a total scam even means in cryptocurrency. If the coin is still fucking there uh, on a, some blockchain or other, like all those hundreds of millions of VRC20 tokens that just keep popping up. So no, sir. I did not. I did not mean to denigrate in any way, Bitcoin or any other coin. Mm -hmm. And when I made the comment about Monero, I wasn't. I was not dissing Monero's technology. I'm just saying you guys are not alone, um, and that there are dozens of others coming. And I. What, I, I what is all, your crypto of all, choice? Yeah. What is your? Uh, which is? Do you do you have a favorite? Do you have favorites? I assume you do. That, there's the question again, for what. My crypto choice for letting things sit is DAI. I'm not a risk taker. It just changed to SAI, by the way. God knows why they did that, because my fucking atomic wallet stopped working. Suddenly, my DAI disappeared. What? I called atomic wallet. Oh, they renamed it. Go through these steps. Download MetaMask, which I haven't even bothered to do. I've been using other currencies. So um, my, my favorite currency is, is DAI. Um, for just general work, instantaneous, never varies more than one penny from the U.S. dollars. So you you easy enough to worry about, oh, my God, Bitcoin may be tanking. No. Um, my next favorite coin is Monero. Why? Of all the privacy coins, I believe that Monero is certainly no less than any other. Um, and therefore, uh, I use Monero. Um, that will be shifting, I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, simply because Monero blockchain, by the way, is a difficult one to fucking work with, right? It, it's difficult to integrate into wallets. I've done that. Um, nothing wrong with that. It has to be complex. Uh, but there are others coming that, for these for my own use, the way that I use crypto and, and the needs that I have. Um, and I love smart contracts, by the way. I think smart contracts are the future of this fucking world because whatever logic you can put into a computer from a software standpoint, you can write on the blockchain. I know. I just created an entire distributed exchange with the exception of the portal, which is, of course, software on your computer, logic, uh, uh, smart contracts uh, on the blockchain. So I did not mean to dismiss Monero, as I was saying. My apologies if I intended that. I didn't. 
but you guys have got some serious comp- competition coming up. Serious competition coming up. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I think in Monero, uh, Monero just focuses on that that one core value proposition, which is being digital cash. So trying to get that right first, which is not as easy, uh, uh, you know, as as it sounds. Uh, we so, see a lot of people trying yeah. to do that. I don't think. I think I, I I personally think Monero is doing that the best right now. Do you agree, or do you think there's uh, a currently a coin that's more can't, can't find any any privacy coin. Uh, that is any more functional and gives me a better sense of comfort than Monero. I say that to everyone. And when yeah. people talk privacy coins, the first one I mention is always Monero. Um, but I'm telling you, you guys got some serious competition from some serious quarters. And, um, uh, you know, don't ever let up. Uh, don't take your nose uh, from the grinding stone or your shoulder from the wheel else your wagon will roll over. So... Now, now, how about um, in terms of like digital gold, right? So lots of times Bitcoin is characterized as digital gold. Uh, I think you've made predictions of Bitcoin hitting a million uh, million dollars, a few million dollars. Uh, I think you even said that you would. Uh... I do not agree. That that probably added 25,000 people to the ranks of, of um, uh, cryptocurrency users. Because What's it was that? in all... That my prediction of Bitcoin at a, at a million dollars or two million. And, and keep in mind, I'm John fucking McAfee, people. You know, I said that I took whales, for example. So please, um, <laughs> you must look beneath uh, some of my actions to see the intent. But yes, um, that's kind of thing. But oh, I, I know, guess my, my question oh, is if, 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 if about digital gold in all sincerity, what the fuck is that all about? It is taking um, something that has been created and based upon uh, technology stretching back to the 1950s, the beginning and dawn of the digital age. And I was around back then, folks. I have seen it progress and grow. Um, and um, this, this thing, this, um, and I'm sorry, the question itself, because I'm off now on a tangent. Well- the, the question is, so there's this, you know, obviously this meme of digital gold and the idea is, well, that Bitcoin is is kind of uh, mimics digital gold better than any other coin. And I guess what I'm trying to get to is, number one, do you do you believe in that concept? And number two, if that's the case, uh, aren't there issues with the fact that Bitcoin is not fungible? So where every unit equals every other unit, doesn't that kind of break down that analogy of digital gold? Well, Listen, I, I frankly could give a flying fuck about digital gold because this is a step backwards. As I was saying, I've seen this technology grow, the digital science, and we've reached the point, people, we can build our own goddamn money um, independent of a standard of faith. Because what is gold? Faith, right? Uh, digitally backed. Which is, no, listen, gold is a fucking tool or a fucking um, product of um, uh, ornamentation. That's all it is, people. There's no inherent value to gold other than it's rare, but you can't eat it, can't fuck it, can't drink it, can't sleep on it. It's too hard. Um, We need to get away from this concept because you understand linking things to gold only gives power to the people who own all of the gold, like the United States and, and Fort Knox and those other people. That, that's their attempt in subtle ways to manipulate the minds of the public to think, no, you want something digital gold. Drop the fucking word from your vocabulary, people. You need digital utility, not digital gold. This is the problem. People come in and they start investing and making money and don't use the goddamn currency for what they were intended. And if we don't use them, I promise you they will all end up with zero value because that is the faith upon which the value of these currencies is based. The ability to exchange cryptocurrencies for goods and services to buy and sell um, to, to connect this new paradigm 
totally divorcing us from the old horrific pyramidal system and its overburdening power to totally divorce us. We have that. And they want to have a link in our minds. It's all a mental thing. People understand this. Digital gold. Yes, it's like digital gold. What does that mean? Those people still have the gold which could any moment become absolutely worthless because we, who create our own currencies, don't give a flying fuck. And so they're desperate to get us to believe. Yes, gold still has value because I am basing my cryptocurrency on the word gold. Please, people, see it. There won't be a digital gold. There will be a digital flash, like the guy who can flash from here to there. There will be a digital superhero team. But there won't be no gold in this, I promise you people. <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely an oversimplification, uh, but it, it is a nice way to frame things because it's, you know, I think even Satoshi himself in the early days of explaining it, he said, you know, imagine you have this this metal, something like gold, uh, the only difference being you could send it from, you know, here to the other side of the world instantaneously. Um, so it, it, it is a nice way to kind of frame things. Obviously, uh, right. you know, Bitcoin does a lot more. It's, go ahead. It also implies that we need a digital gold, forget gold, mm -hmm. a digital standard, right? It implies we need one. Well, tell me why. Well, why, why, me well, the why does, why do, why do these things get a, to obtain value then? So then why, uh, why, why are we talking about, uh, you know, Bitcoin eventually being worth, uh, millions of dollars or Monero eventually being worth a lot more than it is today? What's the, uh, where's the value coming from? The original people who bought Bitcoin, did so because you could buy pizza slices with 100 bitcoins for example um do you understand oh yeah i see do you have any yeah i've only got three i wanted i was or only three thousand i was i was going to buy coca-cola with with two thousand of them so suddenly look well, i tell you what i'll give you i'll give you i'll give you four dollars for those instead of the three this is how value is created the use of something that is of value to the person that's trying to, to um, seduce into coming into the room with you. you. You cannot have value in something, no matter how spectacular the technology that creates that something may be, if there is nothing inherent in it. And the inherent value of cryptocurrencies is either as an exchange for goods and services, or as a, uh, a means of providing security and, and some token or other, or, or what have you. But, but please, people, we, we, <laughs> we're in a new world, a new paradigm. We have now a new fucking normal. And we need to see that this that we have is normal, innocent, and it belongs to us. We have time for one more question. Oh, really? We're already there? So I guess, so I guess, um, hmm. Let me see. Let me I'm see. Falling, anyway, you, you were falling asleep there. I saw you. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Ah, uh, shit. Now, I don't, I don't know. Now you got me. Um, hmm. I guess, all right, here's a good one. Uh, on average, do you think, uh, humans are, are, are good or evil? Because a lot of this debate comes down to, uh, if the whole entire world is going to be adopting something like Monero and it's going to be uh, leading to this uh, uh, world of liberation where humans can transact freely uh, without censorship, without the control of governments and banks, is ultimately this is this going to lead to uh, the, the downfall of civilization or the blossoming of civilization as we're given this uh, empowered with this technology? That's going to be the blossoming. We've been empowered since we came out of caves and learned how to communicate with one another. No, um, the um, Gina, sorry, are you going to like for me? My apologies, sir. I mean, so, obviously, people are trying the issue to stop. Is, the issue them. is, you ask about good and evil. I, I don't think I don't think there is a single human being who is. Uh, either all one or all the other. I mean, we're mixed fucking bag. We love, we hate, we we um, 
we have hopes and dreams, we're gracious and kind, we're compassionate, but we're also greedy and jealous and fearful, all these things. This is who we are. Um, so people go, well, privacy coins and all of this shit, you're giving great power to the people. Look at the power you're giving to the criminals. Good. If a criminal does not use a new fucking product fully, you have designed it wrong. Think about it. The telephone allowed the mob to take international control of all of the whackings and thievings and brutalizings ac across the nation. That was the greatest boom. Now, does that mean that nobody gets a telephone? The automobile. When the automobile came out, not the Model T, but when they started going at speeds of more than 50 miles an hour, bank robberies in America went up by a factor of 10. Why? People were using the automobile as a getaway car. Get the newest automobile faster than these fucking cruisers we have and they're gone. No automobiles. Please, people. Yes, criminals are going to use what we develop. If not, go back to the drawing board because it's not worth jack shit. Criminals are the first to pick up a good technology. We, if you want to invest in crypto, you should make friends with some top criminals around the world and ask them so which which cryptocurrency they're all using monero now by the way which cryptocurrency which should be used to um, transport that uh, 50 tons of heroin to los angeles right good we've done something right because if criminals can use it we're not preventing you from using it you're now still equal do you see girls have got cars well yes you can get one too Please, buy one. Uh, Crowley's got telephones. You may have one too. Stop worrying. This is life, people. So, what? yes, I will answer yes. We all know criminals are using Monero, so that's why I use it. Not because I'm a criminal, but because those bastards just aren't wrong. I mean, they, they, they don't take those risks. If they're feeling secure, well, okay, <laughs> let's use it. Because the overwhelming majority of people using Monero are upstanding, honest, maybe even church going, a couple of them citizens. So please, people, stop this nonsense. Oh, we've got to have know your customer and anti money laundering. I didn't put that in the McAfee decks that I just put out a month ago. Fuck no. I said, I ain't doing it. And since it's in smart contracts on the blockchain, I can't ever shut it down. And since it's completely decentralized, we don't know your name. You're nothing about you, not even your IP address. It's sorry, nothing. Um, and so when they say, well, we want to know what these people are doing. Well, how the fuck am I going to do it? I got no control. Well, then shut it down. Yeah, I wish I could. It's on the, it's on the blockchain. Um, I, I can't help you. Well, we're going to shut down the McAfee decks. So, well, go ahead. We, we're also distributed. Okay, we already have... 30 more across the country with a different name. So go ahead. You can't shut us all down. This is my gift to the people. Anyway, go ahead. One more question. So, so I know, you know, you're, you're obviously a, a wealthy guy, successful guy. Um, when, when do, you know, but you're, you're kind of, you're obviously a forward thinker as well. When do others, uh, other wealthy individuals like yourself start realizing the power, the true power of something like Monero? Why aren't we seeing more people kind of shuffling money into it, uh, as a way to securely hold, hold their money, uh, privately, uh, kind of as a Swiss bank, uh, is there going to be a moment like that? Where, where wealthy people are going to see, uh, see this as a, as a tool to uh, safely secure and hold their wealth anonymously? Do you think that that moment will come? God, I have no clue. I do not hang out with wealthy people because they bore the living shit out of me. So I know nothing about them. And as for me, I mean, everybody knows who I am, so I don't have to explain me. As I wish I could help you on that, unfortunately, I cannot. And thank you for having me on. Thank you, John. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for doing this. We'll uh, we'll edit it and get it up as as soon as possible. And send Janice uh, send Janice a link. Okay. And in fact, not just that. Why don't you write up a tweet for me for you? Okay. I mean, for for this thing, a tweet uh, saying what what you wanted to say, and then I'll just tweet it as if it came from me. How's that? That way you'll save you trouble. I don't have to. I don't, I, sometimes I do better. I don't even remember what I said on this thing. I, I, go, <laughs> it. I can describe it. It'd be helpful if you just wrote it up. 
send it to Janice. Beautiful. How about, how about price? Pre- I never ask price predictions from anybody, but do you have any for Monero? Do you ever, uh, do you have any Monero price predictions? I do not. I do okay. not. Listen, see, here's the problem. You have stopped doing shit like that because it merely focuses people on trading cryptocurrencies rather than using these motherfuckers. Agreed. Agreed. That's why we, we often don't talk about it on this show, but I figured I, I'd give it a shot. Try to get a. No, you're not going to get anything else from me. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I've right, my last time. I've given up. Again, it's because it isn't important, people. You're, you're running you out of body think... parts to eat over there. You know, you can only... Uh... Who cares? I'm 74. I mean, most of them are falling <laughs> off anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Good luck. Uh, we... Um... We all we also think and discuss uh, what the future more for the sale bit uh, and the sale bit token. Um, now they in our group, the people there are some some people they they get interested in the sale bit because uh, about the circulation, the privacy, and they and they love it. But uh, it's like but like the other blockchains, uh, software, because of the privacy, it's, it's hard for them to use. It's hard for them to, to spend their coin or store their coin. Um, and they interested in with the token. That's yeah, why, uh, yeah. Yeah, personally, I think I, I believe that this uh, privacy uh, crypto uh, will become uh, more desirable in the future because uh, right now, with all the things that are happening in the market at the current moment, you see that uh, uh, government are coming up with CBDC themselves, so and they wants to track everybody, and so when there will come a point where every other token or every other uh, crypto, including Bitcoin, even right now, Bitcoin, uh, government are tracing Bitcoins. That's, that's why they, uh, they, they, they flag some of the address as a, 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 a black address or something like that. I'm not quite sure the term. Yeah, so there will come a time where um, at the end of the day, all this becomes so common. Um, all the cryptocurrency, all the uh, crypto tokens are becoming so traceable by government. Of course, it's, it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. Uh, that because governments are very focused on this anti-money laundering thing. But what about in a further future where uh, we're talking about minimal use of fiat because now government wants to track all this, authorities want to track all this because what is happening in the market, the crypto that is in the market are affecting the crypto uh, on the rock, the, uh, affecting the fiat, uh, affecting the fiat. Uh, and if people are going to throw their weight, throw their interest or rather they are focused all the all on the uh, crypto then fiat becomes something that hey, after i print the fiat money is useless now no so in order to uh, let fiat remain relevant that's why they need to have a lot of these uh, regulations uh, uh, of eml of everything to, to, to come in work in place with the cryptocurrency. So that, I believe, is what governments are actually thinking. If I'm the central bank, I would probably think the same way. I don't want the money I print to go out without value. I want the money that I'm going to print. Imagine I'm the Fed today uh, with all this pandemic, pandemic in the market. I started to print $6 trillion. I don't want this money to go out and turn into something that is of no value if the cryptocurrency is so strong out there. I may, I may be in trouble as a federal, uh, as, a, as a central bank or whatever. Yeah. So I want to make sure that 
there is regulation right now to uh, work in hand with cryptocurrencies so that it doesn't go out of hand. But that doesn't promise me that the future will be the same as now because the future is where everybody start to start to slowly thinking, uh, slowly start to think that, hey, you know, I can move my finance quicker with crypto rather than with fiat because with fiat, I'm still subjected to some tax, some whatever, I'm losing so many percent of uh, my asset. If I'm just going to use, keep using fiat, I'm not saying fiat is not good, but fiat is definitely a good thing. It's just that people's mindset will start to change. Now we are talking about maybe uh, world population, maybe about one, two. One is even too much. Maybe just about 1% of world population who are actually thinking of crypto. 10 years later, I don't know how much. 20 years later, I don't know how much. Maybe by 20 years later, you probably have 20%. 10% of 20% of people thinking about cryptocurrency. The world don't need too, too many people to think about cryptocurrency. They only need 10 to 20% in order for cryptocurrency to keep moving and keep growing. Why? Centuries or nothing to use. They were, they were using coins and then they cut the coin as a tax or something like that. Then slowly they realize that hey, we do not have enough gold to make so many coins. What do they do? They they use the rather they mix gold with copper. They mix gold with something else to make more coins, to make more money, so to speak, to make more currency. So at the end of the day, they realize that hey, now I can use even less gold and more copper, <laughs> you know, and then. And then you see during World War period where, this, where you see the Germans start to print a lot of money, you print a lot of dollar notes. So, and then there is this fast forward in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia, during the World War, we have this thing called the banana, banana dollar note, where you have a picture of banana, then there's, I think, some of uh, the coconut on it, something like that. So, that dollar note can only be used during the uh, during the war period. After the war period, what they use? The central bank print their new notes and they, and they say, now you have to use this new note. The old note during the war time, no, cannot use anymore. So, will this kind of things going to happen again? Of course, not in the fiat to fiat, but Will this kind of thing happen in future where they say, nah, now you now you start to use uh, digital digital money from the central bank? China is going into uh, CBDC. I think Korea, Japan, and a lot of other countries, they are going into CBDC. So one fine day, one fine day, we don't know what is going to happen. Maybe it's a big war or maybe it's a bigger pandemic, so to speak. People may, uh, government may start to say, ah, now um, you can only start to use CBDC. You know? <laughs> so maybe this currency that you're holding on, you put one side, put aside first, maybe, maybe. You know? So these are thoughts, these are ideas that we can think. These are the possibilities that could happen in the future, which I think when it comes to thinking about this, I think it's very interesting because you look at how history has uh, repeated itself a few rounds already. Now, next time, it may repeat again, but it's a different form. It, re it still repeats. And then you will start to have people saying, now gold is more important. You look at this gold, uh, it's worth more than your house. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so what is in for the future? I think. Is open to open to everyone to think to, 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 to visualize. But one thing for sure is when it comes to technology, when it comes to how we run our life in the city, 
technology, technology and technology. You already see AI, you already see robotics, you already see crypto now. All this will improve, all this will become better, all this will become faster in the future. So there's a government, there's a central bank to say, ah, now everyone should use only CBDC. Maybe only CBDC you can use. You no longer need you no, no longer can use the paper money, you know. <laughs> I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> till now I use uh, the screen. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. During the one time, the people they stay at home, it's hard for them to use the, the cash. They use yes. the electric money. Now, yes. that's the way the government, they train people to use electric money. After that, they will switch to the CBDC easier. C20, right? That's the only problem. So, so uh, if people are using the wallet to buy sell in an e-commerce platform, and then uh, what they see here is $100 left in my wallet, but at the back is one hundred dollar worth of uh, crypto, whatever crypto it is. If it is XNS or ERC related, then you have to keep extra Ethereum, right? ETH. Yeah. So if we are if we are able to use, if we are able to eliminate the 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 part where if I spend this money, I also must have money, I also must have enough ETH in my wallet. Because people people are lazy. They don't want to, oh now I I spent I spend five dollars here, I still need to have another five dollar uh, or a few dollars uh, ETH in my wallet to allow to enable this transaction to go through. So people are lazy, they just want to have one. If I see $100 sing dollar in my wallet, I use $5 and that's it, I don't want to.